In this video, we'll go over 10 equippable items which had weird or unique effects in Vanilla WoW. And at number 10, we have the Lufa. This was a trinket which had the effect to remove one bleed effect. Now, seeing as trinkets were kind of rare and hard to get, you didn't really lose much for having this equipped. And using it to get rid of a bleed from a warrior or rogue in PvP, or the odd raid or dungeon boss who applied a bleed, was pretty good. So it was a unique trinket with an effect that was pretty useful, despite the fact it gave no other stats. Then again, a lot of trinkets in vanilla didn't really have stats on them either, and would sometimes only provide a unique effect. The trinket was easy to get too. All you had to do was complete one quest in the Syrian Gorge, which required you to go around and kill 20 dinosaurs. And there originally was no limit on the bleed it would remove. So when the Burning Crusade came out, and one of the bosses in the new raid, Morose and Karazhan, used a hard-hitting bleed as one of its mechanics, tanks were using this vanilla wild trinket in order to remove it. So they added a restriction to the trinket, where it would only remove a bleed effect applied from a target level 60 or below. Because outside of this trinket, there are no ways to remove bleeds outside of a dwarf's racial ability stone form, and straight up immunity spells which remove everything. Bleeds are one of the few common dot types which can't be removed by healers. Although in Legion, they did add a homage item in the game called the Feathered Lufa. It was an item that you could create with first aid that had the effect to heal for a little bit and remove bleed effects, but only while you're on the Broken Isles. And with the removal of first aid in BFA, this item was just added to Taylor's along with all other first aid crafts. And at number 9, we have the Six Demon Back. This was an item with an on-use effect, which would have one of six random effects. Three of its effects were to shoot out a spell. Two of its effects were CCs. Its last effect was to summon a Fell Hunter pet for you for a little bit. Of its six effects, its three spell effects were a lot more common than the other three. So every time you used it, it had a higher than normal chance to shoot a Fireball, a Frostbolt, which would slow the target for five seconds as well, or a Chain Lightning, which would chain to two other targets. And then its other three more rarer effects was a Cyclone-like ability, which was just a straight up stun, a Polymorph, and then the Fell Hunter Pet Summon. Since Trinkets were pretty rare, and you had a good chance for its effects to just do damage, and it only had a three minute cooldown, this item, despite having a weird effect, wasn't half bad as far as DPS trinkets go. Obviously, there were much better ones in the game, but if you had this one, it at least had some fun effects on it if it didn't do damage. Number 8, the Gnomish Mind Control Cap. This engineering item had the effect to possibly mind control an enemy target, which would then allow you to control them like a warlock or hunter pet. But, if you already had a pet out, you would have to dismiss your pet first in order to use this ability. But there was also a few catches to it. After patch 1.11, you could only use this item on targets out of combat. Also, you had to be an engineer with a high engineering skill in order to use the item. But despite its name though, you did not need to be a gnomish engineer. Any engineer could use this helmet. The helm had a 30 minute cooldown, so not something that could be used very often. And as probably the biggest caveat to this thing, it had a chance to fail, which was pretty common with a lot of engineering items. In fact, that's still kind of the case today. If this thing failed, it had a chance to just not do anything, or mind control yourself and put you under the control of the mob you were attempting to mind control. And because engineering items had a pretty high chance to fail in Vanilla WoW, this was not used as a reliable form of CC, and instead, just kind of a fun item with occasional niche uses. Number 7, the Horned Viking Helmet. This helmet had the on-use effect to charge an enemy and incapacitate them for 30 seconds, but it would also knock you down and stun you for a bit. A 30 second CC is actually an incredibly useful effect, to the point where a lot of warriors would farm the helmet in order to use it in PvP. And of course, had some niche PvE uses as well since CC were heavily used in dungeons and raids. The helmet itself dropped from Eric the Swift in Oldemon, and is only available to Horde players, as the NPC is friendly to Alliance. And since it was located inside Oldemon, a not max level dungeon, warriors could solo this place to grab it, if they were smart about it, as the item dropped from one of three of the Lost Vikings. So if you attacked one of them, the other two were going to join in. 
Soloing lower level dungeons back in Illawau was a lot harder than it is today, even if you had about 20 levels on the place. And since the helmet had such a good effect, after Vanilla WoW, they gave the helmet a little restriction that it could only be used on targets level 60 and lower, basically. Number 6, Skull of Impending Doom. This was an offhand item that has the effect to increase your run speed by 60% for 10 seconds, which was a pretty good effect back when not all classes had speed increasers, and the few that did had incredibly long cooldowns or restrictions placed on them. And the offhand only had a 3 minute cooldown, but when used, it would deal damage to you and then drain mana over its duration. So the offhand worked very similar to modern day Burning Rush, a talent that warlocks have which increase their run speed but deals damage to them while it's active. If anything, Burning Rush was probably inspired by the Skull of Impending Doom. In order to get this offhand, you had to complete a four part quest chain which had you go to a dungeon and around the world killing things. The quest would start in the Badlands from a dwarf, who would send you to Oldemon to grab a tablet, which despite the quest text, didn't actually require you to go inside Oldemon, as the tablet was located right outside the entrance. Then you would go to another quest giver in either Ironforge or Undercity, depending on your faction, who would then send you to Dustwalla Marsh, Stranglethorn, and the Alteric Mountains to collect three items from three elite mobs. Then, you'd be sent back to the Dwarf in the Badlands and you'd receive your Skull. Even with the drawbacks of the Skull, it was still a pretty useful item just for the speed increase it gave you, and even saw some niche uses in PvP, on classes that can equip an offhand normally. For the Burning Crusade, the item received an update to drain 60% of your mana and health when you used it, instead of a fixed amount like it did in Vanilla WoW. This was most likely done so it couldn't be abused by the new health values that players had keeping its drawback as an actual drawback to it. And then in the Cataclysm, you can no longer obtain this item. So if you have one, it still works like the TBC version to this day. And at number 5, we have the Freezing Band. This was a world drop epic ring that had a 1% chance whenever you were hit to freeze the target for 5 seconds, and inflict a little bit of frost damage. It also gave some frost resist and increased the damage of your frost spells. Now, the unique thing about this item is absolutely that on-hit chance of freezing a target for 5 seconds, as this freeze was treated basically like a stun, and would just freeze them in a block of ice for 5 seconds when activated, had no internal cooldown, and did stack with another freezing band. As this ring was not unique equip, you could have two of them on at the same time to double the chances of getting freeze procs. The only thing that might have prevented this from happening though, was how you obtain this ring. It was a world drop epic item, which is about the hardest way to obtain an item in the game, as you just have to get really lucky to obtain this from a random drop. So usually, the best way to obtain one was to just buy it off the auction house for a crap ton of gold. And even then, there was no guarantees that there would be one on the auction house. But if you were very rich, and you played on a server with these being sold, you could obtain two of them and have fun with your enemies randomly being stunned whenever they hit you. And since the targets were treated as frozen, there was lots of synergy with Frost Mages and their Shatter talent. And at number 4, we have the Thunder Brew Boot Flask. This was another trinket item which had two unusual effects tied to it. The first being, when you used it, you would breathe fire for 5 seconds, which would give you a nice little AoE. And I've heard reports that this AoE could be used without a target and wouldn't aggro nearby guards if used on low level players and towns. Its second effect is that it would get you drunk, which could be a good or bad thing depending on who you ask, and all on a measly 30 minute cooldown. Vanilla WoW had incredibly long cooldowns on a lot of their items for almost no reason. <laughs> that was kind of the name of the game back then. Everything had long cooldowns in other games, and if anything, WoW's cooldowns were pretty reasonable in comparison. You rarely see abilities or items with cooldowns this long today, when that was kind of the norm back then, as you may have noticed with some of the other items on the list. Now, the way to acquire this item required a lot of legwork. You had to complete a five-part cross-continental journey in order to complete the quest chain, which awarded this trinket. So let's go over it. First part of the quest chain required you to talk to a dwarf in Westfall that required you to be level 40 in order to accept the quest. Westfall was a low level zone, so it's almost impossible you found this on your own 
while leveling normally, and also unlikely you found this quest when you are at max level, since the quest didn't appear for low level players or max level players. And the quest giver himself is kind of hidden in an out of the way location. This is kind of a secretive quest to accept. Anyways, the first part of the quest required you to go to Stranglethorn Vale, in the middle of a Naga camp in order to get some holy spring water. The second part of the quest chain required you to get three separate materials. One located in the Swamp of Sorrows, another located in Tenaris, and the last all the way in the Hinterlands. Then you'd be asked to get one true silver bar, which you could just buy off the auction house. And after that, you'd be sent on another journey, this time to Feralis in order to get a branch. And then for the final part of the quest, you'd be sent to the Syrian Gorge in order to get a piece of oak. Then, after you return to Westfall, you'd finally get your trinket. There's some speculation that this was meant to be a quest for players newly obtaining their mounts, to give them a reason to run around the world with their newfound mounts. And that's why it had them go to like five different parts of the world. A speculation that was most likely entirely correct, as in the WoW Diary book, a book in which one of the WoW vanilla developers talks about what went into making the game, they do talk about how they really wanted cross-continental quests for all classes at level 40, so they'd have a reason to use their new mounts. This quest is a good example of what they had planned for every class, instead of just a few of them getting quests like this. Number 3, The Spectral Essence. This trinket has the effect to allow you to interact with ghosts inside of one town. This trinket was pretty standard for quest-like items and special effects, as trinkets in Vanilla WoW were not very commonplace, and good trinkets were pretty rare, your trinket spot was usually fine to equip something there without hindering your character all that much. In order to get the trinket, you had to complete a quest which would send you into Skolomance to kill a rare elite, and burn two bodies. Then you'd get this trinket, which would allow you to talk to the folks of Cyrodaro, and even buy some unique items from a vendor, which could only be seen with this trinket, or the Eye of Divinity, a trinket only priests could equip that dropped from a boss in Molten Core. The trinket didn't have any stats or do anything else. This is basically just the precursor to quest items, which did special things. Blizzard would usually just put them on trinkets that you had to equip. And at number two, we have the Dark Moon card Twisty Nether. This was a Dark Moon trinket which had the effect, which would only have a chance to activate when you died. Basically, it gave you a 10% chance to resurrect after dying, with 20% health and mana. And when the trinket rezzed you, it worked kind of like having a soul stone on you, in which you could choose to accept a resurrection or not. Now, seeing as this trinket only had a 10% chance, it was not at all reliable, and not really worth the trinket slot in raids or dungeons. Its uses were basically just for solo content to occasionally save you a run back to your corpse, or if you literally didn't have any other trinket it at least had the potential to be sometimes useful in raids or dungeons. Now, this trinket didn't actually see very much use until arenas were added to the game in the Burning Crusade, in which people would equip this trinket in order to sometimes come back to life in an arena match, which could single-handedly help you win the game. Usually, after one person dies in arena, the team which secured the kill will basically treat it as if they've already won, and maybe let their guard down a little bit. So, seeing someone res back up real quick to join the fight is all it could really take in order to turn the tide of the battle back in your favor. And as far as I know, this trinket still works in arenas today. Maybe. I tried looking it up and couldn't really find any confirmation, but I also didn't find anything saying that it didn't. And at number one, we have the Hook of the Master Angler. This is a trinket that had the on-use effect to turn you into a fish, and allow underwater breathing and an increased swim speed. Kind of like the artifact fishing pole effect, which turns you into a fish and allows you to swim faster. Except instead of having to equip something in your weapon slot, this one only required you to equip it in your trinket slot. Unusual for a trinket like this, this trinket actually didn't have a cooldown in Vanilla WoW, where usually all fun abilities had incredibly long cooldowns. This one, you could just turn to a fish whenever you wanted well, outside of waiting 30 seconds after equipping the trinket anyway. The trinket is a reward from the Stranglethorn Fishing Extravaganza event and winning the grand prize. So not many people could get it, considering the event is only held once a week, and basically only one person per server can win per week. You can still win this trinket today, but you do have to get first place in the fishing tournament, which is pretty difficult. 
unless you're on a server that literally has no one else trying the tournament that week. Which is doubtful, since the tournament also has a prize for an heirloom ring item. Which is an incredibly useful item, as it gives you an extra 5% experience. And since the item is so useful, that means lots of people are still doing this tournament today in order to try to get one. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't try to win it. The first time I ever tried doing the tournament, I won second place. Not good enough to get this trinket, but it was good enough to get the heirloom ring, which is what I actually wanted anyway. Alright, and that's it for the video. If you know of any other weird vanilla items that I missed, I'd love to hear about them as well as ideas for future videos just like this one down in the comments.